following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to uh, Dell in Texas. Hey, Dell, what's going on? Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? Call. Great. Thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Appreciate it. I love your show. I just stumbled upon it probably, I don't know, maybe a month ago. And how'd you find us? I found you on YouTube. YouTube. That's a beautiful thing. Well, we appreciate you growling and prowling with us. Welcome to the Tiger family, man. Wow. I like it. Totally. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> And welcome. This is Dave White sitting in for the one and only Tom O'Brien. We're going to kind of try to do these occasionally, which is a Tech Insider Hour on Fridays when things are kind of winding to a close and not much is going on out here. A good time to sit down and think about maybe more macro issues affecting technology. You, of course, can always check out my Tech Insider newsletter on the front page of TFNN. Uh, it is a weekly. It's uh, fairly inexpensive, and uh, I have some big wins in that thing for uh, uh, one that uh, comes out uh, and is priced so affordably. Uh, as always, uh, we want to check out the markets as we start uh, today, uh, up 17 points on the S&P cash, but that is not the whole story. Uh, the story is the volume that comes in on this, and so far it has been rather light. Uh, if you listen to Tom, he talks about the New York Stock Exchange floor traded volume. Uh, I use the uh, what is called the New York Stock Exchange consolidated tape. That is everything that trades that's listed on the New York Stock Exchange and the Amex. Uh, so if you actually just uh, X'd out the uh, volume from the NASDAQ, all the shares that traded, the volume would be in it. It's a little bigger sample size, uh, includes uh, all the volume from the dark pools. Um, the New York Stock Exchange is close enough that it does not matter. Um, it's just that uh, this is uh, a lot more affordable feed and really is no big deal. But you need to know not to compare apples to oranges. Uh, we are at all-time highs. Probably we'll close here. I'm not saying that we won't. I will tell you that the warning light is on, the red light is on, and that is because we are busting these highs with, again, with lighter volume. Volume has been light all day long. It has not really accelerated. 2.6 billion shares on the New York Consolidated Tape. As we break this high, uh, I would be looking for a minimum of 4.5 billion by the end of the day and much more. Uh, thinking that we are looking around the 5 billion shares. So we are just a hair off of 50% of what I would think is a rousing endorsement for breaking these highs. Does this mean that the market can't even tick uh, a little bit higher? Um, no, I think you could probably get up to 2,100. It may just kind of tick and slip up here. So if you're uh, talking about uh, jumping in front of a uh, steamroller to pick up some dollars, I think you can do that, but that is an adequate description of the risk reward. Uh, pick up your dollars, just do not fall in front of that steamroller. Um, for me, I'm much more interested in sitting back and waiting for a very nice fat fast ball right down the center of the plate, which I suspect that we are going to get. One of the reasons is uh, so many stocks uh, that are out there uh, testing triple tops with a light volume today, very light volume in the individual stocks, very light volume in the ETFs and the bigger indexes too. And uh, some of these are going to be much, much more vulnerable to the downside than the overall market. So uh, again, most of my calls are probably in my positions, probably will not be index positions. If they were, they would probably be something like the IWM. Um, but uh, we'll talk about that as it moves on. As always, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com, and I will be glad to answer your questions via email. Again, um, if we can, let's kind of push this to the more macro of uh, the uh, 
of the side of technology, maybe a little bit bigger picture. We've got already a question in the van. We've got a couple in the email. And uh, I look forward to maybe someone's bright, smiling voice over the phone. Uh, we were talking uh, in the previous hour uh, about, uh, uh, where is that out, out here? Let me find it. Uh, what was the name of that company again? Oh, uh, HDP. And I said we'd start talking about this one in this hour. Uh, one of the big themes in investing this year in the Tech Insider is going to be machine learning. Part of that uh, and, and a sector of that is called big data. Um, the big money probably not in big data. Uh, the databases that actually work with huge amounts of uh, all kinds of data. Now, Microsoft, or not Microsoft, uh, Google, and Microsoft to a, a, a part. Uh, but uh, these companies that have big data already uh, pretty much are building things for themselves inside Facebook. Everybody wants to be able to get to it. Amazon, they want to know from that data what you're going to buy, what you're thinking about buying, what you might buy, uh, what they can sell you. Um, basically, it's all about parting uh, with a few dineros. Uh, Hortonworks uh, does a, is kind of like Red Hat is to Linux. Uh, Linux is free. It's a free operating system based on Unix. Uh, Hortonworks uh, does support, just like Red Hat does support for Linux, on a thing called Hadoop. And Hadoop is a, data, a free database that's uh, maintained somewhat by Hortonworks, uh, but uh, by just about anybody that wants to get involved in the project. And this is all about working with huge, vast amounts of data. Um, anytime you get anything technical, of course, uh, there are smaller databases. I have one on the machine that I'm coming to you from right now. Uh, it's a little small uh, database. Eh, what is it, about uh, 8 gigabytes big? It's not very big. Uh, but it takes a fraction of the power uh, that this machine uh, runs on. And I can get data anytime I want from it, and it really doesn't slow down the machine. Uh, but when you're talking about terabytes and terabytes and terabytes of data, um, and of course, every day, another terabyte of data, if you're Amazon or if you're Google or the rest of them, uh, being able to go through a great deal of this is horrifically uh, problematic. Uh, most of the time, it's because memory and the, the, the memory of a computer is probably the slowest thing that you can get. Intel is trying to solve that with their new memory um, initiative, and we'll really see a great deal more of that uh, come this fall and after the first of the year, uh, where they're going to put on mass, massive amounts of memory inside the processor itself. So you might be able to put those terabytes of uh, data literally uh, on the same chip with the processor. Uh, when you're going through all these uh, huge databases, there's a lot to be had out here. Anyway, Hortonworks is down today. Um, but I, if you want to compare this to something, think about Red Hat and Linux. It's Hortonworks and Hadoop, uh, their support of a public domain database for vast amounts of data. We'll be back after this. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. 
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And the stock market is nothing but opinions, isn't it? Nobody knows exactly what's going to happen in the near future. I only know that I am nervous as a cat on a hot tin roof to have any money at risk right now. And I think that uh, no position is a great position as I go into the weekend on even short or long term. I think we're going to have some big opportunities. Maybe we get volume in Monday and Tuesday, and uh, that makes me think I want to buy any retrace. At the moment, though, uh, 2.7 billion shares as we have uh, 42 minutes before the close. That says we're going to do about 3.1 billion shares on the New York Consolidated Tape. I was looking at a minimum of 4.5 and more like about 5 billion shares. Do we have a signal to actually pull the trigger short? The answer is no. So can you tick back up uh, three points? On Monday or five points on Monday, do we hit 2,100? Eh, we could. Uh, but again, uh, much more like gambling than intelligent speculation for me. Uh, anyway, we wanted to talk about some other stuff. We've got some emails coming in. Um, what do we have here out here? Uh, did I close that? I did. Hang on just a second. Let me bring something back up. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay. Um, we were talking about Hortonworks. I got an email for somebody that wants me to talk about Microsoft. I wrote a little bit about it in the Tech Insider today, uh, but this thing is starting to break out. And one of the things you would have liked to have seen was some decent volume today. Um, Microsoft is breaking out above this $56.85 level. Uh, we've got about 19.3 uh, eh, million shares as we speak. Uh, if you wanted to talk about the April 19th high, that would be 29 million shares. Uh, and, of course, uh, for a valid signal, I would use the December 29th high that had 41 million shares. Neither one of those is breaking out with significant volume. Um, Microsoft, am I going to short it? No, I think they're going to do okay. Um, we actually talked about uh, this in, the, uh, in my writing today, and a little bit of it was... Uh, just what Microsoft has to compete with, and that is Apple's uh, laptops are, for the most part, their design is almost four years old now. In fact, there's a great deal of writing this week um, 
where uh, a lot of the Apple fanboys are kind of ticked that they haven't found anything, and Apple uh, doesn't have anything in production and won't look at a new MacBook Pro or something like that until maybe after the first of the year. A lot of people are thinking that, or at least a lot of the writing uh, and backed up by some numbers suggest that Microsoft's laptops and their notebooks and their tablets uh, are going to do very well this week as kids head back to school and college. Um, but uh, what you can't uh, ignore is incredibly light volume as we go back up through here. If you want to look at the volume yesterday, we had 26 and a half million shares, still not uh, close to the 29 million shares of April 19th, and certainly nowhere close to the December 29th high at 41 million shares. And this is why I say that to me, can these stocks go higher? Yes. Uh, is the risk reward horrific? Yes. Is this much more like gambling than intelligent speculation? The answer is yes. What you would need is some sign of continuance in Microsoft in the next couple of days. If you do not see some kind of uh, bandwagon effect where everybody wants to jump on, uh, this is a pretty good signal of a top. Um, we were talking about Apple, uh, so let's take a quick look at that. Um, I brought this up in the previous hour, uh, and this is a great little Gartley pattern out here. Um, my power law vector indicator numbers that basically uh, look at the energy in a whole move is something that I like. And uh, we've got about 18 on the way down from the X point to the A point uh, on Apple. When we look at the C to the D point, uh, about 12. Uh, I, I know a lot of people are probably not familiar with it, but kind of look at these numbers logarithmically. Um, and, uh, and just look at, at them as the electric bill. Uh, $180 for one month, you got $120 on the other month. Uh, where is the energy being used? Well, certainly on this way back up, you had one big day and that's been it, and light volume back over here. Uh, the uh, D target was 107.49, we've got to 107.65. Um, could this go to 108, 108 and a half? Could, still would be a valid Gartley pattern, what you don't have is any kind of volume for the last four or five days, and uh, that always has to be problematic. Now, some of these stocks, the most heavily uh, in FLX, uh, the ones that are the perpetually high short stocks, uh, like Netflix, getting a pop today. Uh, one good sign of watching for highs is a market where there's almost no volume and all the volume is in these stocks that have perpetually have 25% of the uh, float short. Um, Netflix is now just filling its gap down that it had on 55.6 million shares, doing so today with a mere 15 million shares, uh, is not back up at the high. Um, this is not a bad looking chart to pull the trigger short out here. Uh, the downside is that 25%, uh, around 20, 25% consistent short interest on Netflix and why you probably look for a little bit more in a stock like this before it tops out. Uh, this could be, um, you know, you got some decent volume here today. What you would look to see is now that maybe you close this gap, maybe get up to 99 bucks on Monday and then see no volume. Also, by the close of the day, when you look at the numbers short for Netflix, you would want to verify that no one was shorting this. Because if they're shorting this today, then they will gap it up and run it again on Monday. And you'll just be out to Tuesday waiting for the shorts to quit shorting these. Other high uh, stocks with high short interest, TSLA. Let's look and review the earnings of this stock this week. Uh, this one did have a nice little Gartley pattern. Um, that uh, didn't go all the way back down to its uh, D target, uh, was uh, actually about $12 up, um, but uh, continued to roll back higher. Let's uh, move out of that right at the moment. Uh, um, you've got, for the most part, what I was looking for, what we've talked about on my show a lot, and that is uh, this thing getting back up to about $240. Uh, this is where you would probably want to look if you were thinking short on Tesla. Again, this is massively short, 
So you just have to know that this one is a hot potato. You can get squeezed very easily in these highly short stocks. Another one perpetually 25% short. Light volume going kind of sideways out here. But uh, to me, that 240 level with incredibly light volume and the shorts giving up on shorting would be a very good signal. Uh, maybe in the next couple of days that we've found some kind of high in this market. Uh, we'll see what uh, Mr. Facebook has been doing this week. Uh, we'll look at this. Of course, you had the spike on earnings. Um, just very, very uh, tough to see that this thing um, isn't doing what I've been talking about, which I think is kind of peak uh, social media. Uh, this was the hot item two, two and a half years ago. You normally get this reversion to the mean after about three years of being in the, the sector that everybody talks about. Most uh, sectors will run for a year, year and a half. Uh, the big one, uh, like Facebook and social media, about three years before they revert to the mean. We'll be back after this break. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Had a question of about Amazon. This is Dave White sitting in for the one and the only Tom O'Brien. Uh, we're talking just a little bit more about technology this week and what we're seeing. Amazon, of course, the uh, CEO sold uh, $750 million worth of stock this week uh, through a uh, filing last night. Didn't seem to do too much damage to the stock. Of course, a nice earnings call uh, up to $770. Uh, what you haven't had is a lot of continuation with a volume in this one either. Now, could they uh, just turn the dials and, and come out with more earnings? 
Uh, the answer is probably yes on this one. Amazon's not a company that goes broke. Question is just how much money they'll continue to pipe back in to the company, and you really don't know. It's at the will and whim of this man. Uh, he will sell a certain amount of shares every single year. Uh, it is on a schedule. Uh, so what uh, are we talking about on this one? Well, he's got a little bit of discretion on whether uh, and when to sell. Uh, and he decided to go ahead and let uh, uh, loose of uh, a million shares. So that's uh, 750 million, eh, $760 million worth somewhere in that area. Um, so the stock kind of went a little sideways on earnings. Uh, you would have liked to seen this pop today or even yesterday's have a little bit more volume, a little bit of continuation of this move from earnings. And that's what has me concerned out here. Um, we've got about one or two more days for a lot of these stocks to set back up. Um, I'll go through it in the uh, next segment, but uh, we'll talk about maybe some of the earnings coming out next week also uh, in the tech sector in general. But, of course, uh, the big one uh, that I'm thinking about right now is Disney. I think Disney comes out uh, Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken, after the bell. Uh, this one has been going sideways uh, during my regular 2 o'clock show. Um, I've been kind of opining a lot of articles that I continue to see about the exodus of people uh, and the best of people from ESPN for all the wrong reasons, i.e. middle management uh, trying to uh, validate their jobs uh, on a bigger basis, um, Walt Disney, uh, or at least uh, Disney itself, is making an, a fairly decent asymmetrical triangle. And let me see if I can't to draw this real quick here for you all uh, so you can get the idea what I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, this is when these things break uh, to the false uh, direction the first time. And we are pretty much all over that in that asymmetrical triangle for Disney right now. So I would not be surprised to see this one bounce a little higher for a day or two or lower and then see this thing turn around next week because that is pretty much the pattern out here. You failed to make, um, you know, really higher highs, higher lows. Uh, this just continues to come back in around this $96 level as an average. And that continues to be um, what I suspect that you are looking at. Uh, very, very tight ranges uh, until earnings on Tuesday for Disney. Hopefully everybody can see that. Can I make that bigger? I think I can. Um, and uh, that sets up that asymmetrical triangle right into earnings. Uh, three quarters of the time, if you get three quarters into the time into the apex of a triangle that a stock makes with its price pattern, that's called an asymmetrical triangle. Uh, and three fourths of the time, the first move out of that is the head fake. So, um, what you would want to think about is Walt Disney moving and fading the uh, first big move. Not after hours, but the first move after a couple of days in Disney out here. Okay, what else do we have? We've uh, gone through a great deal of these. Had a question about Oracle, O-R-C-L. Of course, uh, the CEO kind of uh, under attack. The reason why uh, Oracle has bought out uh, a company that is heavily owned by the previous CEO and there's uh, some kind of discussion out there that maybe they shouldn't have done it. Uh, I don't think that there's anything going to happen. Uh, the company was NetSuite uh, and made, uh, actually NetSuite started by a former Oracle employee. Um, didn't really seem to uh, uh, attack this stock very strongly this week. Uh, what you didn't like or what I haven't liked is this move back up to the previous high uh, where you got into the candle, but it was lighter volume, March 21st. Uh, you had a nice little spike up here to $42 on 17 million shares. Got to 41.91, so nine cents short on July 15th, but just 13 million shares. Uh, they're going to have this NetSuite buyout kind of hanging over them. A lot of the discussion is that maybe they paid a little bit too much for this, uh, for Oracle. 
So as one of the big uh, horsemen of technology, you kind of have to keep an eye out on this one. Uh, but that's it. Uh, let's go to Intel real quick, INTC, and check that out. Uh, um, Intel, it is one of the few out here that it's up to its previous high uh, on about the same volume. Uh, about 42 million shares every time it gets to this mid-35 or right at 35 or just slightly over 35 at dollar level. It spiked uh, through it on July 20th. Um, this could be exactly what we're looking at in the, um, the uh, S&P uh, 500 today. That is the spike. You don't get any real juice above the previous highs, no sign of strength, and certainly the same kind of gap down the, the next day anyway. Um, but uh, you're moving back up, you know, today uh, we're at about, what, 14, 15 million shares going into the gap down of 64 million shares. And uh, another reason why I am nervous uh, and don't have a signal yet, but kind of nervous about the risk reward to the upside, especially in technology. Uh, so we'll uh, continue to keep an eye on that. In fact, uh, I had a couple of people ask me some questions about something in the Tech Insider today. So I will talk about that in the next segment. And it's uh, the beginning of it, which is uh, the big men of the street have already uh, decided that the market is headed south. Doesn't make them correct, uh, but we'll talk about them just a little bit in the next segment. Anyway, Intel, another one of the big horsemen out there in technology. Um, CRM, a uh, question in the... Uh, email about that one. Uh, again, a lot of these stocks, uh, either bigger or uh, smaller, are setting up for these triangles. Uh, and that means that you it, almost impossible to pick which, um, which side these things bounce out of. Uh, this has earnings on August 29th, so we've got, uh, what, three weeks into earnings on this one. Uh, but lower highs, uh, higher lows, uh, going sideways out here. Um, this one would probably have another week to go through its triangle. But uh, nothing in here that really starts yelling and screaming to me that these things are running higher anytime soon. Maybe a little higher, maybe a little lower. But certainly so many of these with light volume um, let me think that we've got one or two maybe three days before we need volume. When we come back, we're going to talk about the big men of the street, uh, and they've already set sail. And it's not the direction that you would like if you are thinking higher prices. We'll be back and talk about that. Maybe my editorial in the Tech Insider today. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund is currently offering four-year first mortgages on many of the fully renovated properties that it has purchased. The first mortgages are third-party appraised with a maximum loan-to-value ratio of 70%, providing a secured investment that pays a fixed return of 5% annually, which works out to a monthly income of more than $416 per $100,000 investment with your principal intact and secured. These four-year first mortgages are perfect for anyone looking for a secured investment that provides monthly income much like a CD. 
For more information, email tigerfund at tfnn.com or click on the Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund banner along the right side of the tfnn.com homepage or call our office directly at 877-518-9190. There's a limited supply, so act now. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Tom O'Brien. And this is Dave White sitting in for the one and only Tom O'Brien. Come Monday morning, Allergen is out with earnings when we look to Monday night. Um, not a lot of a ton of stocks, but they are all kind of small. Not seeing a great deal out here that would probably move the market. Uh, let's see if there's anything else out here. Uh, Rackspace, of course, uh, this week uh, its earnings are out after the bell on Monday night, but they're already talking about their buyout. So I don't know if that's going to matter a great deal. Had a, a little bit of continuation to today from $31.53. Uh, from the high out here uh, to, to Tidewater, TDW. I'm very interested in this one. I wish uh, earnings weren't coming. I probably would have bought this um, just because of the light volume. But going into earnings, I can't. But, man, if this thing doesn't uh, um, have a bad earnings report, one of the best setups in the market right now uh, for TDW and energy uh, this three dollar and seventy nine cent low came in at fifteen million shares. It popped with energy. It's come back with lighter energy. Everything that I like in one. It's just not doing anything ahead of earnings after the bell on Monday night. But uh, you know, if you were real positive on higher energy prices out here, um, this is one of the better looking stocks uh, that I follow and like patterns of. Um, but after the bell on Monday night, if we go to Tuesday, I'm pretty sure it's Disney after the bell, isn't it? Let me see out here. Maybe it's Wednesday. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, Shinari Energy on Tuesday morning. Doo -doo -doo -doo. What else do we have out here? Eh, a few more. All pretty, uh, just looking at it. I mean, there's tons, there's hundreds of stocks out but again most of these things are our earnings uh tw l o is uh, twilio i think that's their first this will be their first earnings statement out here i've warned about this particular stock and the fact that you don't want to be long this thing going into christmas this was one of the uh, premier uh, sliver stocks that was pushed out here in the last month or so for an IPO, a sliver stock is where a very, very, very small percentage of the shares are uh, released to trade. And as time goes along, they add more as the market will adapt to that. But uh, always makes the stock price go up because of the scarcity. But, of course, that scarcity is artificial and short-term. Uh, yeah, Disney, after the bell on Tuesday. For some, oh, I see. It's by uh, not by symbol, but, but by uh, the uh, name. Walt Disney is the way it's alphabetized. Uh, also have Yelp after the bell on Tuesday night, Y-E-L-P. Let's take a look at this one. Um, this one's finally come back up to its long-term resistance level. I've not thought much about Yelp as a big company. Kind of nice to see this thing at least get back up to this level. Um, the volume is okay. Got back up 
to this gap down, though, that was on horrific volume, 35 million shares when we go back a year to, uh, what is that, uh, what is that? yeah, it's July 29th, Sing came down with 35 million shares. It's been trying to fill this gap now for over a year. Um, volume is a little lighter than the last time we tried to get up here December 2nd, um, but um, this is one of these businesses that I continue to think has a, uh, a problematic problem with its business plan. And that is, uh, if you can tell if the reviewers are real or not. Uh, a lot of lawsuits have been flowing uh, and flying around with this one. Discussions about a buyout are probably why this thing's been pushed back up in this $32 region. I can't say that I would want to short it on the chances of a buyout. I just don't know that the business plan has ever changed uh, so that your competitors, if you're a, a dry cleaner, don't just say that you've had horrible service at the dry cleaner. And short of a lawsuit, Yelp is not really going to work very hard to find out whether or not those reviews are bad or not as they try to, re, uh, to demolish your business. Um, and that's the, that's the rub with this one. Can you trust uh, the madness of crowds. And for the most part, with Yelp, you have not been. We can kind of look at the, when we go much farther back. Uh, it wasn't that long ago, September 3rd of 2014. Uh, this was all about social media, and uh, it was $86.88. Um, do, 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 what else did we want to get to here? Let me check my email for anybody else uh, talking about uh, a question. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my and Tech Insider today because in, I'd been working on this for a few days coming into it. Um, but um, this week, the billionaires uh, have let us know that they have gone short. Carl Icahn right now is 100%, 150% short uh, his net worth of his company. Uh, and that's not uncommon. Uh, a lot of times you'll see these companies leverage anywhere up to 30 times, 150% is not that big, uh, but is the basis of a fairly decent big bet on going lower. Uh, George Soros, another one out here, he has bet that Deutsche Bank is going out of business. Uh, he was, why long the pound, he was enormously short with 7 million shares of Deutsche Bank. Yeah, let's take a quick look at that. Maybe he's already collected on that side of it. Um, now, you can't always say that these billionaires are all um, right. But what you can say is most of these guys that are 60 or 70 or 80 years old that have been around the market forever have been around the market for a reason. And that is that they've learned from the mistakes in their past uh, in fact, Soros, the last time he was active in his own fund was 2007 when he was shorting everything that had to do with housing. Uh, he's come back. He has gone along gold, but he has also shorted the living daylights of everything in Europe. He is saying flat out that the, uh, year, uh, the uh, economic union of Europe is going to bust apart, and he is more than willing to sit on his hands why it happens. Now, um, you know, when he was short that thing, he was yeah, he's probably short in the $17 range. So he's made some decent money on Deutsche Bank. Uh, I do not know, of course, if he's covered or not. We only know what happened in the last quarter. But uh, he's not one. There are a whole bunch of people. We've got Stanley Drunkenmiller, Leon Cooperman. They're kind of medium light bull, uh, bears in the moment right now. Jim Chanos is going full tilt boogie short on a great deal of things out here in the marketplace. And probably one of the most bearish things in the market uh, are these uh, venture funds, buyout funds, uh, of which 90% are in sell mode. There's only one company, uh, Apollo Global, that is really buying uh, and out here and doing buy-unders in the market. Uh, and of course, this guy uh, that run this uh, Apollo Global fund was pretty much... Uh, um, uh, ridiculed for calling a top in 2013 and selling everything. Uh, so he has not been uh, right then. But now at the top, this guy is buying with both hands. Uh, 
I have to say, like I said before, I do not have a position long or short, but that is a position to have. You do not have to be uh, working for an hourly wage. You do not have to have a position. If you have an abiding belief, that is fine. If you are a little worried out here, Cash is a great way Larry to go Pesimento home for has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under trading newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. As we come back and wrap up the week, uh, what are we interested in? And of course, we're interested in the volume. We're breaking new highs. We should have massive volume. Of course, this is a Friday, so maybe you can just say, eh, maybe no one wanted to buy this on Friday. Maybe the people want to buy it on Monday or Tuesday. Okay, I'll give you a little bit of that. So what do we need? We need, we need some real follow-through with real volume on Monday and Tuesday. Certainly do not have it today. As I said on the New York Stock Exchange consolidated tape, I would be looking for somewhere around four and a half to five billion. We just turned 3.1 billion with uh, six minutes left to go. I was projecting somewhere around 3.3 billion. We may get to 3.4 billion. Um, for a sign of strength, breaking all time highs, uh, I was looking for four and a half to five five and a half billion shares. I really wanted to sign a strength uh, to make me think that this had a lot more legs to the upside. Um, this looks like more range bound activity at the moment. Uh, we could get some very bearish signals though, and that would be a pullback Monday and no continuation with a great deal of these stocks. Had a question in the den about uh, international business machines and one of their press releases about building artificial neurons 
Um, one of the things that you really need to know is that a lot of these papers are proof of concept, uh, but even if the proof of concept works, you have to get through the part of being able to actually build the thing for a price and that price being accepted by the market and having uh, some application for that market. Um, what uh, Watson's now about five years old as a product uh, that they've been selling to other folks. It's just now actually starting to get some legs underneath it. Uh, and uh, when you see technologies like this that really don't even have an application, you might be, you know, do they work? Are they in neat? Are there great white papers about them? Can you think of the things that they'll build with them way down the road? The answer is yes, but 5, 10, 15 years down the road, will this probably be something? I think the answer is yes. The problem is that the market never looks that far down the road unless you're Tesla, in which case uh, you're paying for Tesla 20 years of growth down the line. International business machines, as we look at it today, is now where the tough sledding comes in this stock uh, we were along this one uh, after the uh, British exit vote and rode it up. Made some decent quick money on it. I like the stock long term. Um, I'm suspecting that we could get a nice pullback if the market pulls back and maybe a, uh, maybe buy it on that pullback. We'll have to see. Uh, but, um, you know, you are against now this huge supply line uh, when this thing was headed back down, which goes back a year to... July 21st, when it gapped down on almost 14 million shares. The first time we've come into this now has been with 7.1 million shares. Today, another problem when you see, you know, the light volume going against these big gaps. And that's why I am somewhat uh, peevish about throwing money at this market back at the highs. I didn't have any problem buying calls uh, around and below about 145 uh, during the British exit. I do have problems up here throwing money at the market uh, at uh, resistance levels, and maybe that gives you a little bit better idea of where my thinking is at out here. Uh, PEs in the market at 25, uh, not uncommon. Of course, normally you want to buy at 11 PEs and sell at 18 or 19 traditionally. Um, you know, we're pretty much at these all-time highs. Is there a lot of cash flowing around? Yes. Uh, can markets uh, remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent? If you want to short here, the answer is yes. Uh, but again, I think discretion is the better part of valor. And uh, when you talk about pilots, they say they're old pilots and they're bold pilots, but there are not many old, bold pilots around. Uh, discretion is the better part of value. Uh, and I am thinking that uh, I'm going to sleep with that cash under my mattress for a while, maybe at least for the next couple of days. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to, and we'll see you Monday.